If you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, you probably heard that you need to eat more calcium-rich foods in order to improve your bone density. But is that really true? And if it is, what are the best sources of calcium? After all, there's so much conflicting information where some people say it's dairy, other people say it's vegetables, and a third group of people say something else. So what is the real truth? Here's what you can expect to learn in this video. First, we're going to bust the four most common myths about calcium. Then we will actually talk about the best food sources of calcium. And lastly, we'll discuss the issue of bioavailability. In other words, how much of the calcium that's in different foods actually gets absorbed by the body. If you want more information about osteoporosis, fracture risk, as well as overall health, click like, subscribe, and you'll be notified when more videos are published by me. Now, before we get there, who am I to even be talking about this? My name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling book called Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. As well, I run a personal training company, both in person as well as virtual, that specializes in helping people reverse their osteoporosis. Of course, since my team and I, we are personal trainers who specialize in osteoporosis. Here are a few of our case studies. On the left is Darlene. She was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 46. And as a result of the medications that she was given her for her breast cancer, her bone density declined and she didn't want to be um, on medications for osteoporosis. So we helped her reverse her osteopenia and her oncologist was quite impressed. On the right is Laura, who lives in Los Angeles. And in, in this picture, she is 68 years old and she was quite frail, quite petite, and her uh, bone density was extremely low. Her T-scores were less than minus five, which is horrible. We helped her reverse that to the point where it improved to above minus two. So she was quite happy with that. Now let's jump into some myths about calcium. Here is myth number one, is that calcium is good for osteoporosis. Now, haven't we always been taught to drink milk for strong bones and teeth, or at least get adequate calcium for strong bones and teeth? But that's not 100% true. In fact, it's not true at all. Here is one study from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition stating that neither milk nor a high calcium diet appears to reduce fracture risk. Now, it is beyond the scope of this specific video to go into why not, but I have created a whole other comprehensive video about the myths surrounding osteoporosis. And it's linked in the description below so you can check that out. Myth number two about calcium is that calcium is good for high blood pressure. In fact, it is not, it doesn't really do a heck of a lot. So here is another study where researchers found that the overall effect of oral calcium on blood pressure, if any, is very small and confined to standing blood pressure. It is therefore inappropriate to recommend oral calcium supplementation for the treatment of essential hypertension. Another common myth about calcium is that all calcium sources are created equal. If you know anything about bioavailability, that's not the case because different foods have different absorption rates. Some foods have a really high absorption rate. You extract a lot of calcium from them and it actually goes in your body. Other foods, they might be high in calcium, but they have a very low bioavailability or a very low absorption rate. And myth number four, is that green leafy veggies are the best source of calcium. It is not for reasons that you're going to see later in this video. Now let's actually talk about the richest sources of calcium. But before we do that, what we need to do is we need to have a fair per serving comparison. It doesn't make sense to compare gram for gram because different foods are eaten in different quantities. And here are a few examples. In one case, uh, celery seeds, 100 grams of celery seeds contain 1,770 milligrams of calcium, which is a whopper. It is a lot of calcium. However, you're not going to eat 100 grams of celery seeds. That's a quarter pound of celery seeds. A typical serving for seeds is counted in teaspoons. A teaspoon is only five grams, not 100 grams. So how much calcium would you get if you were to eat a teaspoon of celery seeds? Only about 89 milligrams. Another example is the classic milk. Now, if you have 100 grams of milk, you're going to get 113 milligrams of calcium. But very often, people will drink a full glass of milk. And a glass of milk, a cup of milk, is 290 milligrams. So that's why it's not fair to compare gram for gram, because that's not really how we consume different products. Here is another example. 
if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, you often hear the magic number of 1200 milligrams of calcium per day. Now, first of all, that's not true for again, reasons that I elaborate on in the video attached in the description. But even if it was true, let's pretend it is. Here's another, another example, spinach often said to be a rich source of calcium. One serving of spinach is considered a cup, but a cup of spinach only has 30 grams. It's not 100 grams. And the calcium content in one cup of spinach is about 20 milligrams, and you would need 60 cups of spinach to get your 1200 milligram of calcium per day requirement. So not that good. By comparison, let's go back to our standard glass of milk. A serving is a cup, which is 250 milliliters, and the calcium content in that, again, is 290 milligrams. How many cups would you need to meet your calcium requirements? About 4.1 cups per day. Now, there's also other great calcium sources. Here, here are the best ones. Almond milk contains 450 milligrams per cup. Soy milk contains 390 milligrams per cup. Oat milk contains 370 milligrams per cup. And regular cow's milk, 1%, 2% milk, contains, again, 290 milligrams per cup. Now, what about cheese and fish and other sources? And let's look at that. Parmesan cheese um, contains 280 milligrams of calcium per cube, which is again a real life serving. Canned salmon contains 270 milligrams per can. Cheddar contains 210 milligrams per cube. Fried tofu, 744 milligrams per 200 grams, which again is a real life serving. And a can of sardines contains 320 milligrams of calcium. Now, People are often quick to point out that some foods have higher bioavailability than others, higher levels of absorption, and that is true. So let's look at the bioavailability of different sources of calcium. These are from the Harvard School of Public Health. So milk, again, contains 290 milligrams of calcium per cup. It has a pretty low bioavailability of only about 30%. And so the net absorption of calcium by the body is only about 100 milligrams. Uh, one group of people uh, are quick to point out that bok choy, a uh, very common vegetable, is high in calcium. Not really, but let's give them that. Let's assume it is. Um, so it, one cup of bok choy contains 160 milligrams of calcium, and they claim that it has a high bioavailability, which it does. It has a bioavailability of 50%. However, 50% of 160 milligrams is still only 80 milligrams. And here's another example. Almonds, another source often claimed to be high in calcium. It isn't. First of all, um, the calcium source is decent, 251 milligrams. However, it has a pretty low bioavailability of only 20%. Therefore, the net calcium absorption by the body is 50 milligrams. And the vast majority of vegetables have pretty low bioavailability. Spinach, for instance, is only 5%. Broccoli is pretty low as well. So there's not a single vegetable source that is a great source of calcium when you look at it in real life servings, um, as opposed to comparing 100 grams for 100 grams, because again, to get 100 grams of spinach, you need three or four cups. To get 100, or to get 100 grams of broccoli, you need you need you know two or three cups. So it's not a fair comparison to compare. Um, no, no, no pun intended. Apples to apples. So what are the best sources of calcium? They are the ones listed earlier. By and large, dairy is correct, as well as canned salmon, canned sardines, and fried tofu. If you like this video, click like and subscribe.